Hi, I'm Joe Weisenfelder with Cars.com. The 2013 Toyota Corolla here is a case study in the power of reputation and perception. Uh, the Corolla has built up a reputation for excellence over decades, and the perception must be that it's still exceptional. What else could explain its performance last year, where essentially the same car was one of the best-selling small sedans in the U.S. and around the world, all while being sub-mediocre in a number of ways. I'll show you how. Now, the Corolla hasn't been updated since 2009, and it hasn't been appropriately updated since 2003. And it really shows, especially when compared against vehicles that have been redone recently, like the Hyundai Elantra, Honda Civic, Kia Forte, uh, Ford Focus. There are others I'm not even mentioning. Uh, and you really see it in a lot of the materials. The headliner is a cheap fuzz where uh, richer woven material is starting to proliferate. Same idea with the kind of cheesy vinyl visors here. Um, and as for touch points, there's more of that kind of stuff, hard plastics, um, where you might want to rest your arms, like on top of the door, even the center armrest. Don't concentrate too much on dashboards, which they're also making soft. But where your arms want to go, that's kind of important. Now, tactile shortcomings seem to be everywhere. You've got this very simple layout to the uh, ventilation controls, which is good, but the rings are actually mechanical. You can feel and hear it opening louvers in the dashboard and such. Uh, the better cars in this class have buttons or at least electronic dials. It's just a better experience. Likewise, just like these controls, very simple, clean gauges. That's great, legible, but again, compare that with some of the better cars in the class. They have bright illuminated gauges. It makes it feel a lot classier. Uh, and it's important because you look at it every day. Cabin space is a little behind the times too. Uh, cargo volumes a few cubic feet below average. Uh, likewise, a tall adult can certainly make it work here in the driver's seat, but legroom and headroom are both below average. The back seat is a similar story here. Uh, for a small car, workable for someone my height, six feet tall. Um, but if you start comparing, you'll find the hip room is dramatically less than average in this class. And even though the numbers suggest headroom and legroom are competitive, uh, I feel more snug here than I did in the Honda Civic, uh, especially considering that the front seat didn't go back as far as I wanted. And even so, uh, I'm kind of jammed in there. Now, uh, in fairness, I have to say, this might look really uncomfortable, but the seats are so soft, I don't really even feel it. Uh, big points to Toyota for the almost completely flat floor in the back seat here too. That makes it much more workable to put three people across. Are you starting to catch the theme here? Uh, once again, below average volume in the trunk here. At 12.3 cubic feet, it's actually only slightly below the Honda Civic, but the Honda Elantra has 14.8 cubic feet and the Chevy Cruze has 15.4. One plus here though, uh, this class across the board offers folding back seats, which is great, but this is a 60-40 split, two pieces. The Civic has just one piece in a single bench. I wouldn't call the ride quality refined, but at the same time, it seemed uh, relatively soft to me, even with these ridiculous TRD wheels, when I compared it back to back with the Honda Civic. For some people, ride comfort is more important than poise. The drivetrain, is uh, adequate, but once again, behind the times. Partly because of a four-speed automatic transmission when the class is now full of five and six-speed automatics. Um, I'm not one to criticize based on the numbers alone. I would take this well-behaved four-speed automatic over a CVT or a bulky dual-clutch automatic, both of which exist in this very car class. Uh, but you can't deny having four gears space this far apart. When you want to go, you hit the gas. That's a pretty big jump down. Uh, the engine revs, there's a lot of drama. The acceleration isn't great. And the four gears is also responsible for below average fuel economy. The EPA estimated city highway combined mileage rating for the Corolla is 29 miles per gallon. Sounds good, but it's actually three miles per gallon less than the Elantra and the Civic. Now compare it with the Chevy Cruze, it's actually two miles per gallon better than the base cruise, 
but the volume seller cruises one mile per gallon better than the Corolla. That mileage story is like a lot of other stories I've told about this car. In fact, the macro story of the Corolla might just be that if you haven't shopped for a car in five or certainly 10 years, even in the same class here, you might get in it and think, hey, this is all right, and buy it and actually be perfectly happy. But if you start looking around, you see what else is out there, you're gonna find there are better options from a number of manufacturers. Hi, I'm Joe Weisenfelder with Cars.com. The 2013 Toyota Corolla here is a case study in the power of reputation and perception. Uh, the Corolla has built up a reputation for excellence over decades, and the perception must be that it's still exceptional. What else could explain its performance last year, where essentially the same car was one of the best-selling small sedans in the US and around the world, all while being sub-mediocre in a number of ways. I'll show you how. Now the Corolla hasn't been updated since 2009 and it hasn't been appropriately updated since 2003. And it really shows, especially when compared against vehicles that have been redone recently, like the Hyundai Elantra, Honda Civic, Kia Forte, uh, Ford Focus, there are others I'm not even mentioning. Uh, and you really see it in a lot of the materials. The headliner is a cheap fuzz where uh, richer woven material is starting